Hello. Oh, today I wanted to uh, talk about a movie on obviously Christmas, um, specifically a, an actual Christmas movie, as I've done for a year or two now. Um, and what better movie uh, this time of year than uh, a Christmas story? Um, because this is 40 years old this year, so. Yeah, and this is a obviously the steel book uh, Blu-ray that I got, and uh, this is just a great movie. Um, this is one that I've seen ever since I was a kid. Of course, there's always the twenty-four-hour marathon of a Christmas story on TBS. I think they still do them. I think uh, TNT, basically two Turner-owned uh, stations, where for from like uh, 12 o'clock midnight until like 12 o'clock about 12 o'clock midnight the uh, the beginning of the uh, December 26th they have just nothing but a Christmas story all day long and I remember when that was a thing that was known in like in the 90s early 2000s it was kind of funny, and some might think that was kind of cute, but after a while, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, I get it. Um, but this is an excellent film. Obviously, it's about uh, the Parker family. Ralphie, played by Peter Billingsley. Uh, Melinda Dillon as the mother, and uh, uh, Darren McGiven um, has the father. Uh, there's also Randy, who... Here he can't put his arms down because of uh, his uh, uh, being dressed in the winter. And um, it takes place in uh, Indiana in a fictional town. So, you know, it's a very Midwestern type film. But it's uh, this film was shot uh, in Canada and Ohio. So not even exactly in the state it was uh, uh, supposed to take place in, um, but, um, overall, this is a film to summarize, <laughs> um, you know, there's a Parker family and Ralphie, he really wants a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas, but, uh, as the film goes on, we find that's a bit of an obstacle, because his mother, uh, says, like, oh, you'll shoot your eye out, and that's like a, a definite no, and that you're not getting it. Um, and he has a, an essay to write, and then his teacher says, like, you know, what I want for Christmas. So he's like, oh, well, this is going to be great. I'm going to write for, I'm going to write an essay about that, about my, how I want a BB gun and why it's it'd be a great gift to have, and wow, why footballs wouldn't a football wouldn't be a good uh, a good gift. And then he gets a C plus, and he just figures a. Uh, his mother had to have gotten to her, so, you know, because uh, she writes P.S., you'll, like, you'll shoot your eye out, and he's like, oh, no, and um, he goes to Santa Claus at the mall, and he, uh, like, well, this is, uh, there you go, uh, there, there's a loophole that my mother never checked, which is, uh, uh, or thought of, you know, Santa, you know, you'll, you, you know, you ask a, <clears throat> Uh, you know, you ask Santa and all is going to be, uh, all is good. But he asks Santa at the mall. There you go. This is Santa. This is a fantastic uh, look, right? Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. But he asks him and uh, first he's blanks and he can't think what he wants. And then Santa suggests a football. He says, yeah, a football. What's a football? Yeah. Yeah. Well, wake up, stupid! And he, there's like this sly that kids are put to, put down to uh, after they talk to Santa. And he goes, and he finally says that he wants, he wants a Red Rider, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a shot a uh, uh, air rifle, and this it just uh, rapid fire says what he wants, and then Santa just says, "Well, shoot your eye out, kid." Then he kind of like. 
or nudges him with his foot down to the to the, the slide and uh, you know in a way it, it, this was Ralph's journey to try and get his uh, uh, BB gun and uh, he also daydreams at various uh, points how like with a with a BB gun he'll be able to protect his family and teacher praising him and giving him an A plus 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 you know for his uh essay about his BB gun that he wants and then he uh, there's a point where uh, after they've gotten the Christmas tree they, uh, he says uh, oh fudge <clears throat> fudge but and then he's uh, has a bar of soap in his mouth and uh, he decides to not say exactly where he heard uh uh, that word from, which is actually his father, and so he, he just spouts out uh, one of his friends' names, which was like the first thing that came to his mind, and um, this causes another like uh, another daydream where uh, uh, because of the uh, soap, you know, he's because he, he get he, he's an older man, like at twenty one, you, you're, like, you're just a lot about kids like uh, soup, uh, soap, soap poisoning is going to cause blindness. And so he c arrives at his uh, parents' place, 21 years old, still Peter Billingsley, and he's just, you know, uh, just, you know, he's, he's just like, you know, he, he's blind because of soup poisoning. And, um, so, so many things in this film are just hilarious, you know, obviously I'm just spouting off scenes from this film, but, you know, this is such a classic, pretty much everybody has seen this movie at this point, um, and so many great quotes, you know, and the whole leg lamp, you know, first gets, you know, fragile, must be Italian, I think it says fragile, oh yeah, <laughs> and, uh, that leg lamp, you know, and goes outside to look at it after it's plugged in and then you see the director of the film uh talk to him about what is it it's a, it's a, well it's mine it's my own i want it you want what it's a, a major award i want it a major award oh, you won that and director of this film is bob clark um you know aside from christmas story he's he also directed the first two porky porky's films and the other film i think he would uh, be uh, best known for outside of a Christmas story would be Black Christmas, which is a obviously a horror film, which interestingly turns fifty next year. So uh, yeah, nine years after he made uh, one Christmas film, which was his final horror film, he makes another Christmas film, and you know, in both Christmas films for him are both cult classics. One's for horror, and the other is. Well, you can watch this with your family. Um, also, uh, Gene Shepard, who, which the, which this film is based off of his book, um, "In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash." Um, he not only did, did he co-write this film with Bob Clark as well as uh, Lee Brown, but he also uh, uh, narrates the film as adult Ralphie, and he also has a also another cameo in the film or he has a cameo an actual person as a uh, somebody at the mall you know with his kids to talk to Santa about you know he says to Ralphie you know hey what are you doing I'm going to see Santa you know the, no, the line in, ends here it begins there and so uh that's kind of a cool moment, and also it's kind of obvious when you hear him, because the you know he doesn't at all at uh, any time to try to disguise his voice. I'm not sure if it was always intended that he was going to be the narrator. Um, offhand, I don't I don't recall if that was ever going to be the thing. I. I there was always going to be narration, but whether it was going to be Gene Shepard or not um, is one thing. But regardless, we, we get him uh, narrating as adult Ralphie. And then also, 
um, appearing in the film in person. So that's really cool. Um, this steel buck also has a, has a uh, Is uh, this on the inside? You know, a, a flick <laughs> uh, after being triple dog dared to uh, stick his tongue to a flagpole and see if it will stick, which it does. And, uh, and there he is also again, but you know, it kind of looks like Flick is looking at himself with how this is. And there's a Schwartz who Ralph kind of throws under the bus after he said um, <clears throat> fudge on the side of the road when his father was changing the tires and something happened and the bolts went flying and he just, you know, blur that out. And, uh, yeah. So many iconic scenes, essentially. Now, well, at least these days they're iconic and very well known, at least in quotes said all, over and over and, um, this is an excellent film where that's uh, definitely worth watching at least every year uh, around this time, uh, for sure. Um, now, as I've said before, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, Home Alone is my favorite Christmas film, um, but I really love this film. It's an excellent film. Um, it's one that is definitely worth uh, uh, watching every year. And uh, there have been various sequels to this, you know, like sort of direct sequels. One is um, what I used to always know it as uh, All in the Family, or or It Runs in the Family. Not All in the Family, that's a TV show. Uh, but It Runs in the Family, but it's been, it then got renamed. Um, uh, my summer story that always con kind of confused me because you know it, on tv when it was played here on tv in america it was always uh, it runs in a family which i believe was the initial um uh uh title which essentially this is a sequel to obviously this but later in the summer of 1941 because this takes place 1940 and so, uh, that's another thing about this movie that's excellent, you know, it takes place in the 40s, and obviously it, it really looks like the 40s, everyone's obviously dressed, uh, you know, they're dressed to the time period and driving, you know, you see cars and toys and everything just looks like it's from the 40s, um, the, the, the way they just, uh, they did this film and how it looks and everything. It just is, you know, uh, dead on. And my grandparents, you know, they grew up in the 40s. And my grandfather would often say, oh, this film is very accurate to how it looks and how everything kind of just was uh, back then. So it seems to be quite accurate. Um, uh, another thing was the oval team, you know, uh, Thing to decode ring, you know, he's a little orphan Andy uh, on the radio. He gets his decoder ring finally, and then he's has the uh, like code, a secret message. You write these numbers, and then you can go and set it to something, and then you get to follow exactly what it is. The numbers, and you have to write the numbers, and then you have to transcribe it, and, uh, and then he to what it, it translates from the numbers to the letters and it's just funny how at the end of it all it's like he goes be sure to drink your ovaltine and that's what he was doing he was drinking ovaltine in order to send in enough all, all the stuff to uh, get his decoder ring so that way he can when the message is basically read on a on the radio he can write all the numbers down and decode it and then He's like, he goes like, 
a crummy commercial and uh, yeah, apparently stuff like that uh, absolutely happened and uh, this is just a this film really just seems like a really uh, an excellent time capsule in the and what it captures and um another thing is i'm sure most people know is this film of course was not on a media hit like it did decently where it played but it was not on a uh, major financial success the uh, reviews were mixed i believe part of the problem was it came out in november you know for a christmas movie i think you you know if you're gonna watch a christmas movie but December is the best time. Not so much in, uh, in November. You know, November is Thanksgiving, at least here in America. So, you know, we also just got done with Halloween. So, you know, in a way, it's just a very odd and uh, time to release the film. But as time went on, especially as it played on television over the years and VHS, DVDs and Blu-rays and now 4K Blu-ray sales have done incredibly well. So this film went from being a very mixed received film, at least by critics, and uh, I guess you could say moderately successful. You know, it wasn't earth-shattering, record-breaking Christmas film by any means at the box office, but it did well. Uh, I, I know some of the... <laughs> Things I've read like, oh, it was just a flat-out failure uh, upon release. Uh, people didn't see it at all until it was like a year or two later on, t you know, TV and all that stuff. And that's not exactly the case. It it, it was not the uh, major uh, probably like uh, box office boom at uh, MGM, no doubt. Uh, hope for but as time went on uh, people have absolutely embraced this film so that's really a a great thing uh, especially when a movie is good when a movie isn't good you know it's kind of like well, you know it's like well at least it didn't make much at the box office or you know whatever you know it deserved to have kind of just came and went and it's like you might have seen it like some years ago, maybe like a decade ago on TV or these days, saw it streaming somewhere, like some of these, not necessarily this, but just some films, you know, like, you know, it just kind of came and went and then, oh, I want to watch something new and you saw something, so you go to watch it and then you're like, yeah, this wasn't really all that great. Um, but this is an excellent movie. It's a really good film, worth watching. Um, Every year around this time, I would say. And, um, yeah, to everybody who uh, celebrates Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas. To everybody who has celebrated uh, Hanukkah already. Yeah, that had already happened. Um, and any other holiday that is this month, because sometimes it's like a, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, happens in December so you know yeah I mean it's the end of the year so sometimes it's like you just let's just have a whole lot of stuff going on but you know regardless I hope all of you are doing well hope you're all having a great day hope your Christmas is going well all right yeah it happened because why not there You never know, I might move again. Anyway, uh, hope you all uh, have a great uh, rest of your uh, Christmas day. And uh, please take care. I hope, uh, again, all of you are doing well. Hope your weekend has been great. And I hope you'll have a great week. See you all next time. And, of course, also have a great rest of your uh, rest of the year. Bye.